Hello again everyone, welcome back to PTA Chemistry channel. So in this first question for this sample paper for the 2022 uh, A-level chemistry 9701 Cambridge International Curriculum. This first question is asking on some chemistry of the periodic table. So this is a section of a periodic table. We know that this is group 1, group 2, group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. And what we're we trying to do here, we need to identify the element that forms a soluble hydroxide and also insoluble sulfate. So this is to do with the group 2 chemistry in the AS curriculum. As you know that the group 2 hydroxide become more soluble down the group. So we know that barium hydroxide is very very soluble and we know that that one has a very uh, basic uh, solution. So there's around pH 13, pH 14, but we also know that barium sulfate is a insoluble white precipitate. So we're looking at barium instead of magnesium. With the same predictable section above, so identify the most volatile element. So volatile means someone uh, who gets angry easily if you talk about volatile person. So a volatile element basically means it boils easily. If you boil easily, it means your boiling point is very low. So the most volatile means it must be the lowest boiling point. In a group that contains elements in all the three states of matter, which is actually your group 17, this is your halogen. As you know, the case study, chlorine is a pale green gas, bromine is a reddish brown liquid, iodine is a gray black solid. So you know those are the three states of matter and we're looking at the most volatile element. So in your group 17, so in your group 17 halogen, we talk about the lowest boiling point because this thing here, F2 versus A2, this thing will have the largest number of electrons in the molecule. So you have greater number of electrons inside the molecule. So your van der Waal is stronger compared to fluoride F2, which will have the lesser number of electrons inside the molecule, and therefore the van der Waals between the molecules are going to be weaker. So that is going to be F, uh, because they want us to identify the element from these uh, symbols of the elements inside this table, inside this figure 1.1 there. Now using figure 1.1, identify the element that forms the largest cations, so we know that the metals lose electrons and you will get cations. So we're looking at the metal side here. The largest, largest there means the size. So obviously, you know, we have this thing which have the most number of shells. These are electron shells. So the more shells they have, the bigger is their size. But how do you decide whether it's cesium or barium that is going to be bigger? So, you know, they're in the same row of the periodic table. But then we know that Ba2 plus has greater number of electrons and this thing has already lost one electron when it formed the plus one cation after losing the one valence electron and the group two atom after you lose the two outer shell electrons you become Ba2 plus this will be isoelectronics so same number of electrons but Ba2 plus has more protons because if you think about the positions in the periodic table uh, B barium comes after cesium, so it has more protons. You have greater nuclear charge. Your shielding is roughly the same. So therefore, we can talk about the net nuclear charge, the effect, the net electrostatic force attractions between the protons in the nucleus here. It's going to attract electrons a bit stronger compared to cesium. And if you attract the outer shell electrons a bit stronger, your size is going to be a bit smaller. So the ionic radius is going to be a bit smaller for the Ba2 plus compared to the cesium plus. So you want the largest and you want the cation. We're looking at cesium instead of barium as the element itself there. The first question is asking on first ionization energy. So this is the idea of inorganic chemistry. So to do with trend, to do with structure, bonding. So here is to do with atomic structure. Um, so nice and easy and very generous for three marks just to define first ionization energy. All right. So if we are ever unsure what we are talking about, since these are all A to F, I'll use a different character, M. Okay, gas going to M plus 
gas plus electrons so that is for first ionization energy once you have written down an equation i know they haven't asked you to your definition comes from there really okay so first ionization energy is the energy required so you are removing electrons so definitely is endothermic you definitely require energy to remove one mole okay the one mole of electrons are very important where are you removing it from well oh, i think i misspelled that from one mole of gaseous atoms so you remove it from atoms in gaseous state and you remove it from one mole of it to form what are you forming one mole of gaseous ion but what kind of ion are you forming you're forming one mole of gaseous ion but the ion is very specific because you are talking about uh, first ionization energy so it's an ion with a single positive charge all right just like that three marks i can't believe it yeah anyway why is the first ionization energy of b so much lesser than a i hope you understand that from a to b you see such a big drop and then it continuously increase across the period again and this is about successive elements so they are consecutive elements in in order of increasing proton number so this has to be fill in a new shell it has got to be a new shell which is further away and more shielded from the nucleus due to the inner shell electrons all right so um the very significant significant means uh, noticeable large uh, decrease in the first uh, ionization energy from b to a means uh, we are feeling in a new electronic shell uh, for a further away from the nucleus further away from the nucleus more shielded so we're using all the correct technical terms um, more shielded from the nucleus what are you being shielded by shielded by the inner shell electrons right so your outer shell electrons are more shielded by the inner shell electrons therefore overall valence electrons for a experience weaker uh, effective nuclear charge which is taking into account um, the shielding effect okay so that's just the z effective therefore a lot easier to remove therefore a lot uh, easier to remove the valence electron for a then b okay so p and t are successive elements in period three so now we're talking about the same period they are not they are not the symbols of the element so sketch the trend in the atomic radius this is across a period tree all right so uh, we know the radius will get smaller doesn't matter really straight line curve i don't know okay the radius gets smaller it all comes down to the idea of effective nuclear charge which i can abbreviate because in the previous section, I written it out in full and I abbreviated it after I wrote it out in full. All right, not because you know, not because I just write it out just like that. Couple of um, points there just for three marks. Um, so you gotta be sensible and think about uh, uh, think about relating atomic radius to effective nuclear charge. The most common mistake people make uh, is to relate atomic radius to ionization energy. You gotta think about cause and effect, all right? The cause is due to the effective nuclear charge. The effect comes down to ionization energy. The effect comes down to atomic radius as well, all right? 
So we gotta think about the 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 trend and the explanation, yeah. So across the period three, i.e. from P to T, successive elements, right? That's what they said. If you read the question, successive elements in period three, right? That's why you need to read the question first. The number of protons increases. So we can say the nuclear charge, meaning to say the charge due to the protons, which is just capital Z, increases. Okay, valence, or you can say outermost uh, shell electrons. So valence electron refer to outermost shell electrons uh, continuously. Fill in the same shell because we are talking about the same period. Period three. So n equal to three. The third shell. All right. So shielding is roughly or approximately unchanged because you know you are filling the same shell overall i can talk about the effective nuclear charge in reality i should have just used z effective as i have abbreviated in the previous section but anyway the effective nuclear charge gets uh, weaker or basically we can say the valence electrons the valence electron experience weaker Z effective nuclear charge the valence electrons experience weaker effective nuclear charge the Z effective across the period therefore your valence electrons are are not pulled as close to each other as possible well, hang on oops sorry not not weaker stronger because your shielding your your shielding is roughly constant but your nuclear charge is continuously increasing so your valence electron experience stronger pull towards the nucleus therefore atomic radius decreases across a period okay so pretty straightforward eh? the idea about nuclear charge increasing but shielding is roughly constant Overall, you have a stronger pull, which is the net effect. And because of the nuclear charge, effective nuclear charge increasing, getting stronger, your atomic radius or your size gets smaller across the period. All right?